Hey guys, happy Mother's Day. I hope you're having a great day. As you guys know, on I believe it was either Friday or Thursday, I gave you guys my non-spoiler review for Doctor Strange, and I told you guys that there would be some negatives. Well, we're gonna get into all those negatives, and I'm gonna give you my final score on it because I've done some thinking, and I might have given it a little higher than I would have than I would have liked. So, and we'll see after my second viewing too. But for now, here's what I thought in my spoiler review. We're gonna get into all the nitty gritty. Now my fiance, she has not seen the movie, so this will be a little interesting, but the one thing to know is she will probably forget the spoilers in T-minus two days, because that's just is how her doy brain does. Very true. Okay, so we're gonna do this in a weird order. We're gonna talk about different spoilers periodically through through, through this whole video. And the, and, the, and the one way to start, and this is gonna be very weird, we're gonna start with the spoiler edition of what this movie is, okay? So the first half of this movie, because most people in the spoiler review, you don't you don't explain the plot of the movie. So the first half of this movie is entirely a different movie in the next two acts. So the beginning of this movie, normal MCU movie, Doctor Strange is cracking jokes, when America Chavez is asking her who's, she, does, she says she doesn't know who Spider-Man is, you know, typical MCU movie, what, what, what you would expect. Second act of this movie, converted into the third act, of course, is directly a horror movie. This movie should have not have been marketed as as a horror movie. You know what? Fuck it. We're ripping the band-aid off, okay? This is not just a review. This is a rant. We are gonna talk about how this movie is mistitled. They call this movie Multiverse of Madness, but we go to only two fucking universes in a Multiverse of Madness movie. Are you fucking kidding me? Like, seriously? Sorry, I had to get that out of the way because it's, it's unacceptable in my opinion to call the movie Multiverse of Madness and not explore the multiverse. You know what I'm saying, honey? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just not fair. Sorry guys, I just wasn't a huge fan of that. Um, Sam Raimi's directing is really good. Um, the horror scenes, they push Marvel to a limit that they have not pushed Marvel before, and that was pretty cool to see. So yeah, that, that that's a positive. The cameos in this movie, okay? Let's talk about the cameos because they've been all over the internet, we know about most of them. There are two that I think are worth mentioning that are really cool. So John Krasinski does officially join the MCU as the amazing fan casting of Reed Richards that everyone wanted. And it's awesome when he's there. But unfortunately, because these are cameos, and because this is a horror movie, Wanda goes and fucking kills the entire damn Illuminati before we even get to know them. She She's fucking like, they didn't even show off their skills. They're like, you know, we need Wanda to be super powerful and badass. Let's just like have her just Thanos them and just snap them out of existence with a, with a blink of her eye with how powerful she is. Which I get Wanda's powerful, but could you not let them show off some of their more fantastical abilities before wasting them? Like, you bring these people in for cameos, but people can be really pissed if they don't find a way to bring back John Krasinski because they waited for that casting for a long time. Like... They better find a way to make a different variant of him and have him come back, because that shit pissed me off. Another good thing is, we heard about the rumors about Charles Xavier. Charles Xavier is in this movie, and he's a cameo, but he does way more than Reed Richards does. Um, because he gets to actually interact with Wanda, and the best thing ever, guys, is you get to see, um, you get to see him basically, um, you hear as he, as he wheels up in his yellow chair, you hear, da 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 and the cool thing is the credits confirms that it is actually the um, it's, it's actually the version of him where from the X-Men 97 universe theme which is what people are saying is going to be set in the MCU so I think the whole thing is that it's going to be the 97 universe and that's going to be crazy like it, it, it's really cool you guys like you're going to see the 97 universe and and they kind of set up that this Charles Xavier, maybe maybe Patrick Stewart will voice voice that Charles Xavier in the 97 show because they kind of hint at it and it's cool. We see Captain Carter, of course. She's badass. Awesome to see Haley Atwell in live action again since we haven't seen her since the older Captain America movies. So that was pretty badass. I think it was really cool that they actually got the same actress to come in that's played the character and voiced the character in live action. Okay, now I gotta talk about Strange Supreme. Everyone was hyped about Strange Supreme. Temper your expectations for Strange Supreme, because he does nothing. 
<laughs> they, they even took out his line where he talks to Steven about things got this is getting out of hand they took that out of the movie I know it's stupid they made so many fucking unnecessary cuts to this thing I don't understand like the best way to describe this movie guys and that's why they were probably not going to add the intro to this because this video is going to be fucking long okay because we have a lot of shit to talk about and I have a lot of things to say that might not be and you guys might this might be your, your favorite movie and it might seem like I'm shitting on your favorite movie and I'm sorry for that but these these negatives need to be addressed I was generally you, you saw my high volume motor, you saw my Doctor Strange costume I, I'm not being a more I love all Marvel movies I, I have loved every single Marvel movie. I haven't defended fucking Eternals when everyone was shitting on that. And I loved Eternals. I'm not afraid to say it. I loved it. I thought it was great. Shang uh, there has not been, and you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw an unpopular opinion at you guys. There has not been a better MCU movie in Phase 4 so far than Shang-Chi in my opinion. Spider-Man was good. I had issues with it, but it was good. Um, but also, it's connected to Sony and Marvel, so it's kind of weird. Um, this movie was supposed to be that big next Endgame movie, and it's not. I mean, it's just, it's, it's so interesting. And we haven't even started to talk about the end credit scenes yet, so don't worry. That, that That's another controversial take we got to talk about. Um, so, so, let's see, where were we? So, we talked about the, the cameos. So, we do get Black Bolt from that awful Inhumans show shows up for a little bit, shows off his powers. It's kind of cool to see him. I guess it's interesting that Marvel's kind of taking characters that people like from the comics and finding versions of them that were played by other characters and bringing them in and giving them a new taste despite their show's ending. So I liked that. I thought it was kind of cool that they actually brought someone back that people kind of didn't know if we would ever see again because his show got canceled. So that was kind of cool of them to do, especially because it's a show that's not directly connected to the MCU. That was cool. Um, let's see, what's another big thing? So... The main story, remember I told you this is a horror movie, so the main story of the movie is everyone has to protect this new girl, America Chavez, who can basically travel the multiverse. That's her ability. And the person that wants that ability more than anything is Wanda. Because Wanda, um, she wants to be able to travel there and she's been studying the dark hole so she can save her kids. Mom's calling you. Yeah, so she's trying to save her kids. And, and that's kind of the big the big thing. She's trying to save her kids. And and then Strange gets a hold of the Darkhold. And when he gets a hold of the Darkhold, he basically uses his corpse to uh, uh, the other Strange, the zombie Strange from earlier, the Defender Strange, to go and basically take down Wanda. And it's unclear by the end of the movie if Wanda actually is dead or not. So this is very interesting, guys. Um, I'm on a highway. The end credit scenes. US. Um, you get to see the, the end credit scenes. You get to see. Um, so the first one it introduces sure Clea, played by Charles Theron. So that was pretty interesting. Um, curious to see what they do with that. The last one shows Sam Raimi's good friend Bruce Campbell in a hilarious scene in New York. That was pretty entertaining. I enjoyed that quite a bit. I, I thought it was pretty good. Yeah, I liked it a lot. Awesome. And I That's think. Cool. And I think that, um, overall, you know, the end credit scenes, there's some cool action. There is some, there's some great, there's some great hand-to-hand -hand combat, um, in this movie, guys. There's a scene between, um, there's a scene between Doctor Strange and, um, I'll see you there. and Benedict, or not Benedict, Doc, Doctor Strange and, um, and, and Baron Mordor from the first Doctor Strange. They fight, like, right as the Illuminati are showing up because he's a part of it. It's pretty cool. They had the Ultron bots in the Illuminati. No, unfortunately, no Tom Cruise Iron Man, which I know I might have been the only one excited about, but I did want to see it. I thought it would have been cool. Okay? I like the idea that there was going to be another casted version. Once again, I think scramming these cameos for secrecy reasons... I'm sorry, Mr. Kevin Feige, but that was bullshit, okay? You could have kept these damn cameos in this movie. And I know people knew about it, but how could you do a Sam Raimi movie without fucking Tobey Maguire coming back as fucking Spider-Man. Sam Raimi fucking made the Raimi trilogy. Are you, like, why? Why would you not include Spider-Man? You, what was it, what was the whole point of during Spider-Man No Way Home in the interview where, where the Sony producers like, oh yeah, Marvel lent us, Marvel lent us a Doctor Strange for this movie, so 
See, if you want to borrow one of our characters, you can borrow one of our characters. There was not one Sony character in this fucking movie. And it's technically not only the sequel to Doctor Strange, it's the sequel to, um, it's the sequel to Spider-Man No Way Home. Like, what the fuck? Like, seriously? Like, I just, guys, my emotions are so mixed on this movie. Okay, you know what? I've decided. We reached the point where 10 minutes in, I've talked about all the spoilers. It's time to give the verdict. I'm going to change my original answer. So, when I did the non-spoiler review, I told you guys I'm giving it a 7.5. I've decided... I'm bumping it down to a 6.5. I'm bumping it down because I, the more I talk about it, the more I talk about it more passionately, the more I realize how many issues I have with it. It's got some cool action. The horror visuals are cool, but on the surface, it doesn't really do anything to set the future forward. And it's not exploring the multiverse. It takes huge thumb down from me. And then it's good paced, but it needed to be longer. There's story beats that are needed and Oh, this is this is where it gets good. Uh, we're getting to the eleven minute mark. We haven't even talked about. It. So I will say, Wanda has a great performance, but the idea of why they use Wanda in this movie pisses me off because they said that both Wanda and Doctor Strange would have equal screen time, which is technically true. Except when Wanda's on screen, you completely ignore that Doctor Strange is there because of the fact that not only is she overpowered, which I mean it's fine. I get she's powerful. That's fine. But my big problem is. The people that, when they, when the, whoever was the writer of this movie, when he wrote this movie, not, not Kevin Feige, not the, um, not Sam Raimi, because they're directors and they have their own visions, but the writing of the movie. The writers at display decided to be, let's pander to WandaVision. WandaVision is our favorite. So let me get these different variants of, of Wanda, you know, interacting with Wanda, which, when we see her struggle with her kids and stuff, and I get they want to show her grief, but they leaned way too much into this being a WandaVision sequel than being a Doctor Strange movie. And I think that's kind of bullshit, because... I, I, you saw my MCU rankings Personally and I'm sure there are people that love WandaVision I don't give a damn about WandaVision It didn't get a season 2 Stop crying about it like a baby And just accept that That story's over It's over Let's focus on the future it's All I can think is Topher right now saying What? <laughs> yeah I know I know he probably would say what But this is my opinion It's on my channel Not his I didn't care about WandaVision Okay like I know there are people that... I'm not saying it was bad. It just was my least favorite. And I don't want it shoved into a movie of a character that I was there to see. I said on many occasions when they announced Scott which was in the movie. I thought she would be a great supporting character, a great introduction. I did not go see a Doctor Strange movie for Scarlet Witch. I went to go see a Doctor Strange movie for fucking Doctor Strange. So, I'm getting that point across, okay? So, 6.5. I hope you guys have a great Mother's Day. Thank you for enjoying my rant. <laughs>